How's it going guys? Josh here from Polymathics and today I want to talk to you about why you don't want to be a writer. So let me preempt this by saying when I was younger I thought I wanted to be a writer <coughs> and it's a kind of paradoxical thing because the minute you want to be a writer, you essentially are a writer. Um, but after many years of aspiring to be a writer and things like that, what I realized, and actually before I go any further, let me be very clear. I am not hating on writers. I'm being very specific about the words that I'm using. <clears throat> probably overly critical of them. In the general sense, a writer is fine. Being a writer is great. They're creative and they bring lots of joy to people. But I'm telling you why you don't want to be a writer. Because what a writer is, is replaceable. Okay? If you graduated the first grade, you can write. You know how to make sentences. Your grammar is probably halfway decent. So <coughs> anybody can be a writer. And with the, with the programs that are out today technology-wise, I mean, Microsoft Word can easily fix 90% of the errors, except for there, there, and there, and two, and two, and which and which and a couple other things that you have to be on the lookout for it's uh... it can spot a lot of major spelling and grammatical errors so the question then comes into play like okay so then what's so special about being a writer and i would say to you that not a lot i mean for those of you who are out there freelancing um, i understand you gotta pay the bills and that that's not what i'm getting at what I'm saying is like if you gotta pay the bills that's one thing but if you aspire to be a writer you're setting the bar really low and where you wanna be is up here <coughs> and I'll give you examples of what I mean so that hopefully this makes sense but anybody can write I can hire a writer to write fantasy I can hire a writer to write uh, a, a book on how to make toothbrushes, on how to fix glasses, on how to type on a keyboard, right? And like I said before, you can you can either even hire someone who you'd say I want a book about zombies attacking the bunny population and wiping them out. I don't know why that came to my mind. But the point is, a writer is a dime a dozen. And you may get paid a little bit more than the other writer next to you who you're competing against, but there's nothing unique about them. There's nothing special. They're just writers. And so this I had this revelation not too long. Well, I don't want to say not too long. It was a while ago. Um <coughs> And then I said to myself, I want to be an author. That's what I want to do. I'll be an author. And uh, led me down the same rabbit hole. Because the thing is, if you're an author of something, okay, so you're not doing work for someone. You're not, you're not, you know, at least this thing you have authority over. That's what being an author is about. You, you are the one who created it, developed it, birthed it into the world. You know everything about it. You are the expert because you authored it. But the thing is, even authors are a dime a dozen. You know, there, there are so many authors who write science fiction, who write horror, who write fantasy, who nobody knows about. And the reason is because they're just authors. They're a step above writers. They're just they're just a little bit further. 
Now, for those of you who may have seen some of my other videos where I've probably uh, recommended writing your own book and becoming an author, that part, this is not in disagreement, okay? Having a credential is a totally different thing. What I'm talking about is that there's a difference. Getting a credential, that's a means to an end. But who you want to be or what you wish to become, and that's the real difference here. That's actually it right there, is in those two words. If you want to be an author, and that's what you want to be. But that what is so easily replaceable. If you change it from what you want to be to who you want to be, then that makes it unique. Because if you become someone, no one can replace that. If you become the person who is the expert, who is the go-to person for whatever it is. Think of Stephen King. He's not just an author. He's not just a writer. He is the expert on horror. He is the god, the guru of horror fiction, right? <coughs> in her heyday, and I'm not saying she's out of it, but I'm saying in when she was very popular, Anne Rice was the go-to person for vampires. She created things that were beyond the uh, writing and beyond the authorship, right? Same thing goes for, uh, let's see, let me think of a, a good one here. I want to pull from someone in, in the nonfiction. So, <coughs> let's see, Robert Greene has several best-selling books on social dynamics, we'll say, um, but he made himself the go-to guy on how to be the modern-day courtier. And for those of you that aren't familiar with uh, Robert Greene, maybe, and I know everybody gives me hell whenever I mention him, but Tony Robinson, what an amazing, amazing guy. <laughs> if you were to say Tony Robinson is a writer, people will look at you like, okay, yeah, he's, he's a writer, but that's not who he is. That's not, he's more than that, right? He is the go-to guy for inspiration. And more than that, he's the go-to guy when when you have lost your direction, he's the one who puts you right back on your path, not anybody else's. So the point that I'm trying to make is that <clears throat> if you're aspiring to be a writer or an author, those things are those are replaceable, easily replaceable. You have to become something more than that. You have to be a one-of-a-kind thing that nobody else can replicate that only you can be because you embody it you live it you breathe it you are it and so in order to do that you have to know who you are and that's that's not an easy thing to do and that takes some soul searching and it may cause you it may may force you to go into a completely different direction than you have been going. That's not a bad thing. <coughs> because if you become who you are meant to be, your full potential, then you will be absolute, you, absolutely unique. No one will be able to touch you. No one will be able to replicate what you do because only you can do it. One of the great philosophers of our time I'll say but he was more far more than that when I say the name you're gonna say like what Muhammad Ali oh my gosh the guy was crazy crazy good at boxing but he even said I am more than boxing I'm a prophet I am a you know this that and the other thing he knew that what he was doing for boxing was far greater than what a boxer does. He wasn't just going into the ring, 
being a body, he brought life back into boxing. He was the voice of a, a particular set of people. <coughs> and the question is, who are you? What's special about you? What can I look at and say, okay, but you know, that's different. That's unique. That's remarkable. That's something to take note of. What is it? Because far too often we aspire to be small things. And one, let me give you, so to follow down this trail of the, the writer thing, right? This, this is what I mean. So I, because I wanted to be a writer, I started looking at like, okay, how to be a writer, how to be a freelancer, what is the pay? And I'm looking and I'm like, there's nothing to get excited about. <coughs> it's, it's doing a lot of monotonous work for people who may or may not have the same goals, dreams, outlook as you do. And you're working for scraps, for table scraps. And the question is, why would I want to be, why would I want to aspire to be something like that? And the, the other thing is, is if they don't like what you produce, that's okay, because you're replaceable. They can get another writer to fill in that gap. And like I said, there's a difference between, I'm not, that you have to have a way to pay bills. But what I'm saying is, in your future, you do not want to continuously be just getting by. You want to be the person you are meant to be. You want to dominate. You want to be great. Or else, why are you here? What's the, what's the point in living if you're not going to really, truly live? <coughs> so when I saw that, I said, why? I can't get excited about this. This writing thing, that's, maybe that's not for me. Then I realized what I wanted to do was tell stories. Because at the core of who I am and at the core of what writing was intended for was communication, communications of stories, all different kinds of stories, our personal stories, our stories for our companies and how to do things, the stories of our cultures and the story of humankind. And the thing is, we're all storytellers, all of us are, but that's what we are. The thing is who you are. The storyteller that you are encompasses so much, so much, right? When you take a look at a lot of the great people in the world, they, they're they not just, I'm just going to throw out examples here, they're not just an actor, they're a producer, or they're a songwriter, or they're, they do poems, or they... Uh, d go out into like I, Brad Pitt does uh, he like builds houses and he adopts children and he's a philanthropist and, and that's just one example <coughs> and there are so many examples and the thing is the thing that's great the thing that's super great about this life is that when you're discovering who you are you can become whatever you want to be. You can be multiple things. You can be a father. You can be a husband. You can be a wife. You can be, a, you know, a mother. But you can also be a pilot if you want to. You can be a homemaker. Or you could be a secretary. You could have your own YouTube channel. You can write a blog. You can write a book. All of those things you could do. And those are the what's. But the who you are. What makes you unique? What makes you special? What makes you so different? 
That's where people are missing it. <coughs> and I don't want you to miss it. I don't want you to focus on becoming a writer or whatever it is that you may want to be. A cook, a chef, I don't know. If that's, if that's truly not it, you don't want to be replaceable. If you want to be a pilot, then don't just be a pilot. Be the only pilot who provides services that, okay, okay, so not that that was actually a good example, but I'm going to give you a different example. Imagine a store. Um, Seth Godin spoke about this once. Imagine a store, and I, I was thinking about this the other day too. He was talking about coffee shops. I'm going to use the uh, laundry, uh, the laundry, uh, what do you, laundry mats as an example. Was in a laundry mat. <laughs> was in a laundry mat for probably the first time in my entire life the other day, um, on my own as an adult. And um, I sat in there and I said, "These laundry mats, like they, they're all the same. Like I, I go across the street, they look the same. It's just lots of washers and dryers. There's nothing unique about them. They're replaceable. If I don't like this place, I'll go to the other place." If these washers aren't doing good or the prices aren't good, I'll just go to the other place. Like there's nothing different about them. What if there was a laundromat that provided you, not only did they make the, maybe they themed the place, you know, the, the space uh, science fiction laundromat. I don't know, I'm throwing out ideas, right? And as you walk in, like everything looks like you're out in deep space and they have a child play area and the th and so this one had a child play area the one that I went to which consisted of a very small corner where there was like a few little box of toys that's not a child play area if you want to provide some special service to your customers if you want to make yourself <coughs> extraordinary give us a whole room with things that we've never seen before that the kids can play on and stuff right make it wild and crazy so that when we take when we go when we say oh where can I go how am I gonna handle this laundry like without losing my mind with the kids automatically oh the science fiction place because that laundromat has this amazing thing where kids love to play they have TV and games Maybe they have video games that the kids can play and stuff, right? Like, why not add that value to your customers? It would set you apart. I mean, these are just crazy because I'm not a lot owner, but there are so many things that have live readings, right? Maybe someone comes in and reads to the people, you know? Kind of like a, like in Barnes & Noble, they do that. They, they have almost like a coffee shop atmosphere. And... <laughs> this place claimed to have internet and it didn't have internet but what if you had you know internet and provided coffee maybe you had servers walking around giving out coffee to the to the patrons one free cup something like that you would set yourself apart because when people think of laundromats they would say every laundromat is the same except for this one that does all these extra special things that nobody else does and yet yeah, might cost you a little bit up front so that is an example right of a store now imagine you're a writer or an author or a musician or a pilot or whatever it is that you do a secretary are you just that or can you be more can you bring you into the equation who you are into that and own it and make it make it <coughs> not about the position anymore that that the people go no matter what happens in this in this uh, merger we have to keep this person because they are the heart of the company they are the thing that keeps stuff going that is a position you need to set yourself into when someone says Whatever field, <laughs> hold on. When someone says, uh, you know, toothbrushes, they think of your name because 
you are the toothbrush guru. When someone says glasses, right? What, what are the things that you think of? Oakley, Ray-Ban, maybe a few others. Because they've set themselves apart. They've branded themselves. Who are you? Nobody knows. You need to know. <coughs> You're more than a writer. You're more than an author. So don't aspire to be just that. Be something more. Be something greater. Because that's what, that's what people are going to want. Anyways, I hope this has been helpful. Hopefully not too much of a rant. Um, <coughs> and uh, until next time, take it easy.